Um, and so let's let's start with Jerry. Uh, Jerry, let, let's start with a very basic question. Um, why is it important to talk with ARM non-state actors, and, and what are the examples of success we've seen of talking with them? Thank you very much, Nick, and also thank you to, to ODI and HPN, and particularly Wendy and Ashley, and colleagues. Uh, in our article, similar saying, my colleague and I, we, we assert, well, first of all, humanitarian negotiations, they, they are a special form of, of negotiations. They're a special form of engagement. And the, the, what makes them special is very much that they're humanitarian. They're for humanitarian purposes. And because they're a humanitarian activity, very much should be undertaken in accordance with humanitarian principles. So this, for us, is a starting point of saying, number one, they are unique. Uh, to your, very directly to your question, Nick, why are they important? In many cases, whether it's for efforts to secure or sustain access, whether it's for efforts to, to establish, maintain a program, whether it's to actually facilitate access by persons to what they need, essential humanitarian goods and services. In many cases, that does involve a, an interaction. That particular type of interaction in many cases is around negotiations. There are other forms of engagement, maybe advocacy interactions, but negotiations, humanitarian negotiations, we're finding are very much required to secure humanitarian outcomes and very much in, in many situations a necessary part of humanitarian assistance and protection. So, so go into that uh, a little bit more. I mean, the journalist in me and, and I think the layman would ask, well, why should we be talking to the Taliban? Why should we be talking to Al-Qaeda? They're not going to listen. You know, they're, they're not going to uh, adhere to any international laws, and they're not going to give us access. They're not going to help anything. Give us some examples of, of how it has helped and, and, in fact, why those assumptions may not be right. Yeah, we, we often focus on the, the challenges and the situations where humanitarian negotiations have difficulties, and that is the case in many instances. However, uh, the groups you've mentioned, and, and I would emphasize that in, in many of the contexts contemporary or recent, we're looking at non-state armed groups, but we're also looking at humanitarian negotiations with governmental actors, with whether it's criminal gangs or others. So we keep in mind this broad array. But the reason is that to, to secure better humanitarian outcomes, whether it's access, humanitarian access, for example, some of these groups may have control or influence over certain populations or territories. And for those purposes, as a party to the conflict, whatever type of group it may be, whatever type of party to the conflict it may be, government, non-governmental, is somewhat irrelevant. If humanitarians need to engage with certain types of actors, groups, and that even extends to communities, clans, different types of actors, humanitarian negotiations can be essential. And if you're looking for instances where that has been successful, there are many, I would look at instances at times, and of course, it can flow. You can have success at some times and not at others. But as a very minimum threshold going into humanitarian negotiations is that by not talking to different types of actors, you're very certainly not going to advance humanitarian objectives. The very minimum, enter into humanitarian negotiations in a particular way, but that, of course, does not guarantee you're going to achieve those outcomes. In Darfur at certain times, um, let's say around 2007, 2008, uh, Ashley and colleagues would give examples in Afghanistan where direct and indirect humanitarian negotiations achieved, achieved uh, better access and uh, facilitated humanitarian programs that would otherwise not have been possible. Uh, the Congo, 2009, 10, 11, very direct examples of where those organizations that focused exclusively on humanitarian negotiations and did them in a very neutral, impartial way made significant progress in accessing areas that were not otherwise accessible to organizations that did not pursue a similar neutral, independent, impartial approach. So I think that, that that's it's really important um, to understand that last part, and I think that brings us to Pascal here. 